Hello everybody, welcome back. Today, another All Trades Accepted video will be coming your way, and we're gonna be using the Flow Rida Panthers this time around. So they have a lot of big players, and obviously the All Trades Accepted doesn't typically include these players, but there should also be some good depth players as well that the Florida Panthers have. Like, I already envision us losing Samuel Bennett. I can picture that being a done deal. I think I'm gonna do the same thing though, where I'm a little bit picky with our trade block because we still do get a bunch of trades, but you know, I just prefer to get trades that make our team a little bit better instead of making us a bottom feeder. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the Rangers one and hopefully we can have a successful run like we did there as well. I'm just gonna turn the waiver. Actually, it doesn't even matter. There's never any players on waivers anyway. So there's really no point of changing that setting. The always inaccurate draft lottery results. Let's find out who is taken from us. Let's sim the expansion draft and we lose Gustav Forestling. That's actually a pretty good player. I feel like every time, pretty much every time they take a player and I'm a little bit upset about it, but I'm going to advance a day here, continue forth and get ourselves to the drafts. Are we going to have a high draft pick? Nope, but I'm going to sim the first pick anyway. They get Baikov, 78 overall, medium elite defensive defenseman, and he's got an X factor, a few abilities there, the truculence. Let's go ahead and sim the next pick as well. I'll sim the first three. There you go. So we get, wow, three defensemen as the top three picks. Camden Stoll has Thunderclap and a bunch of abilities there as well. Harvey has a bunch of abilities in his locker. All right, let's go ahead and just sim to our pick, which is number 25. Are we going to get anyone good? No, we are not. But this guy was supposed to go at 21, and he seems to have fallen through a little bit here. So we'll go with Parker, who ends up being a medium top nine with no abilities. Don't have to worry about contracts once again because we use the add contract year feature. Let's edit the trading block and see if we get some good players added to the team. Instead of having it from 17 to 50, I've upped it to 20. I'm not really sure if that's gonna make any difference, but I guess we'll find out. And here we go. Our surplus is anything. We're willing to trade anything from our team, but in exchange, we want a forward, a defenseman, or a goalie between the age of 20 and 50. Let's go ahead and see how many trades we end up getting. As always, if we are getting no trades, I can just update the trading block, but there we go, right off the bat. Denisenko, and a second plus a third for Larson and Rask. I will go ahead and accept that trade. A draft pickless trade from the Toronto Maple Leafs here, and we will be accepting that one. Another trade from Toronto. We're getting Abramov. Go ahead and accept that trade as well. And a bit of a break there for a minute, but we're getting Mark Pizik for a sixth and a seventh pick. So our draft picks are going out the window. Tyler Bozak in exchange for a fourth, except I don't think we're gonna have any draft picks left. Austin Watson for a seventh. We will accept that as well. Clendenning and Thompson in exchange for Gibson and a sixth. Go ahead and accept the Flyers trade offer. And now we're losing Jumbo Joe and Duclair. That's unfortunate. But here you go, Winnipeg. I'm very upset that we're losing Verhege, but I can't say no. So Carolina, you just got yourselves one incredible player. And I don't even really know those two players coming back. But we're losing Radko Gudis as well now. And a draft pick. We're getting Lundqvist in exchange for Montour. Spurgeon will be a Florida Panther, but we're losing Sam Reinhardt. Really? All right, there you go. Boone Jenner will now be a Florida Panther forward. Maybe he will get traded right back again. Who really knows? But so far, we've had a lot of trades, and I'm kind of curious to see what the team looks like. So I'm going to sim up to the regular season. We'll go into edit lines and find out what we have here. To my surprise, we do still have Sam Bennett. He's still a member of the Florida Panthers. We have Anton Lundell. Uh, Boone Jenner will be on that third line now as well. Claude Giroux, Achari, and Marchman on the second line. Hirado, Barkov, and Hornqvist on line number one. I wonder if, who, okay, yeah, Giroux has all these abilities. If I move him up here, he's a plus five. I'm very tempted, I'm not gonna lie. He does shoot right, so I think that will work. And I kind of want to run with it. Achari has 78 face-offs, which is pretty solid. So yeah, that line will work as well. What if I move Sam Bennett up? Okay, I might do that. Hornqvist, you've been demoted from first to third line, and I'm gonna have to do this all over again because trades are gonna happen and it's gonna mess everything up. I forgot we got Spurgeon. Look at this. All right, so if I move those two, we get a plus two and a plus one instead of just a plus one. We get a plus five with Weaker and Ekblad. We're gonna be insane. Bobrovsky and Spencer Knight, let's do this thing. The trade block was updated without my permission, which is rude, but I've come here 
to adjust it and change it once more so yeah we have all of our draft picks on the line and we don't want any all right i'm going for this year i know that you guys actually have seen a few comments now saying to do a full franchise mode with accepting all trades now that would be interesting i might have to do that but we'll see we will see that's a big commitment and i don't know if i have the ability to make that commitment right now but Let's get it started here with the Florida Panthers and see how this team does after accepting all those trades and possibly accepting a few more. We don't know yet. Chicago has already fired their coach. We are, what, five games into the season? Austin Watson is headed to the Washington Capitals along with a seventh, and we are getting Irwin in return. Let's accept that. And it's the Charlotte Checkers, so let's go to roster moves. I don't want to make our NHL lines change, so I'm just going to do best AHL lines, and then it should keep our NHL the same. Yeah, okay, they didn't get touched honestly i'm not sure that we'll ever beat that rangers all trades accepted that was just outrageous but you know we're doing pretty good so it is looking like we have a bit of competition here i don't think it will be as good as the rangers one though oh wow okay so we're getting Addison and Talbot, which we really don't need a goalie, but I can't say no to it. And we're losing Hornquist and Boone Jenner. That is slightly upsetting, but accept that trade. We're moving down Spencer Knight and Addison apparently. And then we're calling... Okay, hold on. I, I gotta check the rosters real quick. Because I don't know if I actually want to do that. What the heck? Pizik and Nudavara on our fourth line. And somehow we still have a zero line chemistry. That is mind-blowing. I simply will not stand for this, but that's kind of funny. Here's the update. So now we have a fourth line of Bozak, Soderberg, and Thompson. Rask, Heponiemi, and Achari will be our third line. Second line, Bennett, Lundell, and Marchment. Our first line... Still the same. Defensively, I'm just going to make that move again to get that line chemistry. Only two overall is not the biggest change in the world, but let's rock it anyway. We still got Sergei Bobrovsky and that Cam Talbot will be the backup. Let's continue. Wow, it feels like forever since I've seen a waiver, but I'm going to decline that one. Trade deadline is coming up. The team is doing solid. Let's sim our last game here against... The LA Kings, we take a dub. Let's be a conservative buyer and enter the deadline. Find out who's available. Varlamov, obviously. Carlson, obviously. Spurgeon, you're not going anywhere. Hopefully. I guess someone could offer me a trade. And I can't really say no to it. But I'm hoping that you do remain on our team. Can I get Timothy Jimothy? That's the real question. Kind of want to try for him. Perron? Make it four mil? It's pretty good. Pretty good contract for that overall. I'm just going to do it for fun. Can I find a trade for Hurdle? Nah, we cannot. All right. That's lame. What about this one? No, still cannot. Perhaps for Timothy Jimothy? Nope, no trades found. We don't really need anyone per se, because our team is doing well. I'm just trying to see if we can make a trade possibly here, but I suppose we shouldn't really force it if we don't have to. All right, I'm going to try Perron and then that's it. I'm just going to sit here and wait. Oh no. Okay, I'm actually down. I'm actually down. We're losing. So, oh, there's five. Wow. Okay. A lot of options here. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. No. I'm most tempted with this one. So let's go ahead and accept it. It is now past 7 a.m. Still no trades, but we can check out the summary real quick here. McIsaac and a few picks headed to Dallas in exchange for Suter and Sagan. Wow, that's a big move. Pittsburgh gets Iafalo and Edler plus a fifth round pick for Hollander Pustinen and a seventh. There's a trade that we made. Zach Parise heading to the Columbus Blue Jackets with a second in exchange for a second and Dean. Oh, the expansion team just made a big trade. They get Hurdle and a fourth in exchange for a second Mayfield and a third. Okay, no one seems to be interested in us. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Exit the trade deadline. And obviously we did make an addition. So let's go edit the lines quick. And then this should be our team running into the playoffs. The final offense for the Florida Panthers still has that plus five first line, but now we have Perron playing with Lundell and Marchment. Bennett will be on the third line with Achari and Rask, and then there's our fourth line. Defensively, looking the same. And in net, we're still looking the same as well. I'm trying to remember, with the Rangers, we got 54 wins? 56? It was something like that. I'm leaning towards 56. I doubt we're getting there with the Panthers, but still a good year, it seems like. And we will be making the playoffs by the looks of it. 46 wins. Yes, 46 wins for the Florida Panthers. So it's a good season. A good season, you know? Can't be too upset about it. Let's go look at some of the player stats, though, shall we? We did end up winning the division. 
104 points would be first in the Atlantic. Let's check out the entire league. We finished, wow, all right, we were second in the league, actually. That's pretty good. Well, tied for second, I should say. Technically, we're third, because I guess they have us for row, yeah. But anyway, great season, nonetheless. Is it top 16 teams that made it? It is not. Washington getting fleeced at 14. Individual player stats time, Barkov got 73 points for us. Bennett with 66. What are you doing here, Rideau? How's that even possible? Perron got 57. Lundell got 57. Drew got 52. What are we doing, guys? I am curious to see how our goaltenders did. Bobrovsky had a 915, 252, and 35 wins. So it was a good year for him. Spencer Knight was doing okay. Talbot had a 912 and 258. 14 wins on the year. We also had five shutouts from Bobrovsky. That is solid. Let's check out the entire league. See how we compare there. Boom. Bobrovsky is... He's on the front page. He's there. So that's not bad. 920 from Flurry. Hellebuck had a 916. And he had 40 wins. That's a great year from him. For defenseman, Adam Fox led with 75 points. We had 68 from Hamilton and 66 from Yossi. Hedman and Dahlin both had 65. Hughes with 62. I, listen, I don't know what's going on today, but I am really struggling to speak English. I have said so many things that just don't make sense. And I've had to restart because I just stumble upon my words. And I'm like, I don't know where to go with this. So hopefully, you know, when I'm editing this, it <laughs> turns out all right. But man, I got to get my act together here. Sebastian Ajo with 106 points, led the league and gets the Art Ross. We got 58 goals from Matthews. That's not bad. 94 points from him. McKinnon, 102. Ranton in 102. McDusty puts up 95. Let's jump into the playoffs and see how we do. We got Detroit in round number one, and it looks like we're gonna get past them. Took six games, okay. We got the Bruins in round two here. It's tied, and we beat them in six as well. Conference finals, we have the New York Islanders. We're fighting back here. Game seven, we lose in overtime. Game seven. Oh my word, you hate to see it. And they go on to win the Stanley Cup, which had to have been a sweep. It had to have been. That was so fast. Great playoff performance from Huberto. 25 points in 19 games. You can't be upset about that. But let's check out the awards here. Islanders won the Cup, as we saw. The Wild won the President's Trophy. Vancouver made it to the finals against the Islanders. Individual trophies, as we saw. Sebastian Aho gets the Art Ross. Nate Mack gets the Hart. Fox gets the Norris. McKinnon with the Lady Bing. Raymond gets the Calder. Barzell, Conn Smythe. Gibson gets the Vesna. Flurry with the Jennings. And we have Chicharin with the Bill Masterton, Jack Adams goes to Rivers, O'Reilly with the Selkie, Ted Lindsay to Nate Mack, Matthews with the Rocket Richard. Let's check out the playoff tree. There you go. Okay, Vancouver managed to take one game from them, actually. I thought for sure it was a sweep. It seemed like way too fast. But anyway, they got one. So there's the final playoff tree. It looks like there was only one sweep in the entire playoffs, which was Vancouver beating San Jose in round two over there in the West. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.